Welcome to this course on data science for dynamical systems. My name is Oliver Walchert. Welcome also from my side. My name is Sebastian Peitz. And together we are going to teach this course and tell you a little bit about what data science and dynamical systems have in common or how we can use data to learn something about dynamical systems. And so these are going to be the two key components of this course. And this first part of this introductory uh, videos is about dynamical systems. So the question before we get into data science and how to use data to learn something about dynamics is what is a dynamical system even? And we are going to start very, very superficial, let's say. And the statement that we can start with is a dynamical system is basically anything that is in motion. And I'm going to put this in quotation marks. And let's think a little bit about this. Anything in motion means I have a system that changes over time. For example, a car driving or a plane flying. The temperature of a room may change over time. So we have a system that has a dynamic um, aspect to it. It changes over time. And this is what we just consider dynamic systems in the most general way. And during this course, we are going to learn a lot more about these systems. And for now, Let's think about a mathematical description. So what you need is, if we do not consider data for now, we need a mathematical model to study these systems and to make predictions into the future. So how do we get there? And to, to start with a simple example, let's consider Newton's apple, for instance. Right. So we have this apple hanging on a tree, and at some point it starts to fall. So what we can this, the, say about the systems is, we have this apple, which has a mass m. It has a height h, right? So distance to the floor, which is going to decrease as the apple starts falling. And it's, it's going to be accelerated by the gravitational force, which I have the gravitational constant is g here. So this is not a, a dynamic system for now, but this is something where we can start, right? We have this physical law, Newton's law, that tells us that f equals m times a. So what this means is that the sum of the forces acting on this mass uh, is equals the acceleration or the, the acceleration of this this apple. Right? So and what we know what is acting on this apple is the gravitational force, which is the mass times the gravitational constant. And so this is our starting point, a physics law that we know, which we can use to derive a model for how the apple is going to move. Okay? So. What we have first is the acceleration. So this is what I denote by A, which is how much the velocity changes over time. So it's the derivative of the velocity, which I'm going to denote by V, with respect to time. Or what we can also use is the very common notion of this dot, V dot, which means the time derivative of the acceleration. And this is, if we look at this equation, m times g equals m times a, means a is our gravitational constant g. So now we have a second quantity, the velocity. And so we can also try to write something down for the velocity. Okay, so v is velocity, which we are going to denote as the change of position over time. Okay, how fast does this apple fall? which means how quickly does the height change with respect to time. And this can also be denoted by h dot. So now, apparently, these two quantities are really important to describe the system behavior. And that's why we call that the so-called state of the system. And that is denoted in our nomenclature x of t, so the important quantity describing the dynamics, the things which are in motion of our Newton's apple model. In this example, the state x, as Sebastian writes down right now, is the height and the velocity. So this is fully describing all the information we need to describe the motion of the apple when it's falling down. More particular, it's also description of the energy, because in the height, of course, we have the potential energy uh, via the gravity, and in V of t, we have the kinetic energy when the apple is basically start to fall down. 
Uh, the state, of course, uh, here in this model which we have is um, considered a time derivative. So therefore, if we use the state notation, what we can now do is we can rewrite this previous equation in a more formal way by putting on the left-hand side the time derivatives of the state, so x dot, and then on the right-hand side of our equation system, we put all parts of the equations which are not time derivatives, but just any constants or any other functions of time without any time derivative, and we call this f of x of t, our right-hand side of our equation. And what Sebastian is now uh, composing here is a first model, a full model description of the dynamics of Newton's apple, which we also call a differential equation, or more precisely an ordinary differential equation, or short, ODE. This ODE is now describing the dynamics of the uh, Newton's apple model, and of course we didn't use any data here, because it's a very simple model, but you can already see in this very simple model that we have neglected some important effects, for example, air drag, when the apple is falling down, will of course uh, lead to some braking force uh, when the velo velocity increases. And also if we try to utilize these first principle approaches, analytical approaches to more complex systems like ships, airplanes, or distributed power plant systems, sometimes we may get problems to really get an accurate and fully descriptive model. So therefore, in the next video, we will see how data, so observed measurements from such dynamical systems can help us to find more accurate descriptions of dynamical systems.